Hey everyone, this is George Kuros, another episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. I have my good friend, Lori McIntosh, uh, joining me today. And Lori is a, a, a elementary teacher here in Alberta, and I've known her for years, and we were actually having a great conversation before. I always love to like kind of just talk with my guests um, off the record uh, before just having conversations, catching up, and it, it's been great. And I was actually just thinking this as we were uh, going in, I remember meeting Lori uh, years ago at a conference I was speaking at, and somehow when I was talking to her, um, she had brought up that she was on the Ellen Show, and this was like a big highlight. And it's I was just thinking about that, and thinking about how that person that I met feels like a very different person. I'm talking Lori, not Ellen, but is feels like a very different person from what I met now. And one of the things that I love about Lori is. Um, she is, feels like if you have like a huge cheerleader, it could be Lori, but like 10 million people feel that. And she's has so much energy in the way that she really inspires people to, uh, try different things. I know that a lot of times, uh, Lori, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've kind of shared this, uh, on the side with you that maybe I'm having a rough day and Lori just comes out of nowhere with a comment to kind of, to lift me up. And so, uh, I really wanted to have her, um, on this podcast because, I think she does some really incredible things. I think sometimes uh, she does, she, she, uh, we need to be her cheerleader the same way. And uh, I'm really proud to have you. So Lori, thanks for being on the podcast. And if you could just tell people a little bit kind of about um, who you are and, and, and what your role is right now in education. Let me just like catch my breath with George saying that about me. Stop. My goodness. No, it's, it's like a beautiful introduction because um, I think that's what I hope people feel. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I teach full day, full time kindergarten here in Alberta, Canada. I've been a teacher for about 14 years. Got three kids of my own. And uh, yeah, just kind of on this roller coaster teaching journey, kind of finding myself and, and going to those people that you're right, that I cheer on and that I just love. I feel like I'm like this beautiful combination of so many people. Um, that have learned things and shared that knowledge with me, you being one of them, George, like I feel like I take the best of what I can from people and I try and inject it and infuse it into our classroom community. And, and I just, I'm really loving what I do. I, I took the kindergarten job because it was part-time and I was like, Oh, fine. I'll take kindergarten. Cause I want part-time. It was like a total begrudged feeling around it. And now I just can't imagine doing anything else. I just love it so much. Yeah. And it just like, you can tell, you know, like I always think about this when I connect with educators, mm -hmm. um, when I have conversations with them and I'll be honest with you, like as a dad, I think like, like I think about the interactions I have and I'm like, would this person be someone I want teaching my own children? And I know maybe we're not supposed to say that out loud, but yeah, like Lori, definitely like I would love for my kids to be in you. Cause I just, I just know how, um, I just know like, just, just how you lift people up. And I, and I know you talk a lot about kindness and I know, um, and I think a lot of times people, you know, kind of almost negate it. And I think it's when we, when I think about the kindness that you not only talk about, but you model, it's really about elevating and about lifting people up. And I think that's, you know, especially now people are so overwhelmed and exhausted mm -hmm. that we need to be, you know, we need to be advocates for one another. And I think that's something that's really powerful. And one of the experiences that you have that I think is, is different from a lot of people I've had on the podcast uh, is actually, so I think you probably went remote kindergarten at the end of last school year, but you've been yep. full day, full class, five days a week In person. Um, this school year. Is that correct? Absolutely. So yeah. tell, like, what is that, like, what does that look like comparatively to the beginning of the prior school year? Like, what does that, what does it look like right now? Well, I think that's the thing, like through the summer, we just took that time to like, I just remember all of teachers leaning on each other, right? Like we're going to take things slow this year. We're going to meet mm -hmm. kids where they are. We're really going to focus on like strengths and passions. And, and um, generally I feel like that's, that's been the biggest shift mm -hmm. is um, that it's really about more than ever meeting the kids where they are um coming in you know a lot of them have been home for six months i had kids that hadn't been hadn't seen other people besides their family for eight months before they came in so um i think it's the beautiful thing that i've been finding is just that ability to slow down to just take our time to really focus on on what really um i find are the most important things developmentally in our classroom and 
building a community in our classroom. And um, so it's kind of the gift of time. Having said that, I think the hard part is as teachers, we're like, okay, wait, it's October now though. And like, oh, but it's November now. We should probably be doing it. So those like preconceived rules and notions we've made up for ourselves that um, I, I, you know, I don't want to fall back on those. I'm just, I think it's so much about taking the kids lead more than I ever have. I thought I was really good at that. Yeah. Um, I realized I had so much more work to do and I feel like that's the work I'm doing right now. So like, how, like, how are you doing? I know that's like, you know, this is like kind of like, how are you actually doing? Yeah. Because it doesn't, I know it like, it doesn't matter the, like whether you're remote, hybrid, face-to-face, -face, whatever, like it's, it's gotta be super tough. Right. And I think everyone has their challenges with everything. And I remember I got an email, um, from someone that it was like, it really, it really struck a chord with me basically saying like the, one of the reasons that, you know, I got into becoming a teacher is like the hugs, you know, a lot of the, you know, that those little personal connection, yeah. you know, and I know that you're a very, um, you know, a very warm person. Yeah. And I, like I see with adults, I'm assuming you, you do the same with kids and probably not more so. So like, how are yeah. you, how are you doing, you know, right now, like with all of this stuff, you know, and going into, we're, we're recording this in December. How are you doing? Right. Um, okay. Like, yeah. I think it's really, I hate all the cliches, like the unprecedented and the tricky and like all yeah. those words we use, but that whole like COVID roller coaster we're on, that's what right. I feel. Do I have moments of like pure bliss and joy in our classroom? hundred percent I do. Right. Like there's some things that we bring in or, you know, I was telling you a story about a little one yesterday. I was like, wow, she sure is saying yes a lot. And I was like, mm -hmm. give me goosebumps. Like this is why I got into this. Yeah. So that's not gone. Like that's not gone. I think it's about keeping things in check. The exhaustion level for sure. I don't know. Like I feel like I cannot get enough sleep in my life. But then I'm realizing I'm making the decisions I made before. I'm making who knows how many more times those decisions right. every day, all day. And trying to keep myself safe and 18 little bodies safe. Like, I, you know, it's a lot to be given. But um, I, can, like, I can find that joy still. I can really reflect on why I got into this. Like I say, if anything right now getting I'm still in in person so um this is why I got into this was to like listen and to hear yeah. and to to build that community we don't get to, we're in our own cohort we don't get to see other classes we don't get to visit with them on the playground like we are our own thing so just building that huge strong sense of community has been um that's where I find the joy right now that's where I find you know the purpose right now so I don't know how accurate this analogy is, but I'm listening to you and you tell me if I'm like way off here. Okay. So like when I used to teach, um, like, you know, okay. So when I used to go to like university, Friday night was like party night, right? Right. When I used to teach Friday night was like in bed by eight. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like you're no. exhausted, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh, so you like have Friday night exhaustion every day. Now, yes. No, right? my husband and I say the same thing. Like yeah. that Friday night crash that you do where like just everything shuts off and you're like, okay, that's it. Yeah. I'm done. And I'm asleep on the yeah. couch at seven 30, like drooling. I feel like that every night <laughs> I went to bed last night at eight 30 right. with my daughter. Like, and it wasn't even like, I just fell asleep. I purposely planned to get in bed and go to bed at eight 30. Yeah. And I woke up this morning and I still felt like not refreshed. <laughs> Right. Like it is, it's that, it's that level for sure. For sure. Yeah. That's, you know, and, and I, I think, um, as I'm listening to you and, and like, I always kind of think about this stuff as a parent, um, you know, slash educator. And I think more so from the viewpoint of a parent, I, I always talk about, you know, when, when I think about what I want as a parent, it's the first thing is I want to know my kids are safe at school. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to know they're safe. And I think when we think of safety, uh, we've always thought about it in the sense of like physical safety. I don't want my kid like, you know, sticking their fingers in doorways or things like that, you know, getting, you know, breaking a leg, uh, et cetera. But I think it's expanding to like, you know, uh, emotional well-being, uh, you know, mental well-being and then physical well-being and, and, you know, how hard it is to juggle that. Um, but the other side of it too, is I always talk about how I want to make sure that, you know, when I go to school, like when my kids go to school, that 
we're opening doors for them, especially doors that we didn't have as kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, you do, and this is, I shared it a couple times and it's always yeah. gotten um, like so much, which is great. Cause it's like a lot of people read my blog when I post your stuff. <laughs> so like, this is hey. an easy way to write. <laughs> Ditto. Hey, I know this person named Lori, <laughs> boom. And that's it. Right. Yeah. Right. And so um, you talk about uh, DNA and yes. I'm pretty sure it stands for dreams, needs, and abilities. Is that correct? Absolutely. So talk about what that is, okay. like how you came up with it and you know, why, why it's so important. Yeah. Um, you have to answer I, them in that order. No, I got to start like <laughs> at the last one. Anyway. Um, You'll cover yeah. all of them, I'm sure. So about five years ago, I learned about DNA through um, Tom Hyrick. Um, at a is PD it Tom Hyrick or Tom Hyrick? Oh, geez. Is it Herrick? Herrick, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. I'm actually, I'm asking. I think, I, like, I think yeah. I've heard both things. He's I think I've heard nice, both Super too. nice guy. Great storyteller, yeah. super nice guy, right? S insane storyteller, yeah. right? And one of the things that we went into that day was he was, like, reminding us, like, that every kid is, like, a success story. Like, yeah. you know, like, just beautiful, beautiful um, philosophy around it. So he brought up a couple things. He brought up this uh, whole notion of um, we should stop calling things centers and maybe call it like whatever I need time, like win time. So I heard that and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like change that tomorrow on my visual schedule. I just love the idea of like, I don't want to ring a bell and like everybody move to the next activity. I wanted it to be more like free. And I was like, oh, that'll help me with my mindset. So I loved it. And I always try and take like one, besides when I see you, uh, I always try to take one good idea away. You give way more than one. But um, oh, I, was, uh, I, I was say, like, I thought you were going to say, except for you, I don't get any. <laughs> no, no, I don't no. get any. You just no. actually steal my stuff. I have written blogs about the five <laughs> best things right. I've learned about. Right. So anyway, um, so I was like, hey, there's my one thing. This is beautiful. And then he went into this concept of DNA and I like my mind was blown. So um, his idea basically surrounded or, um, that we should be learning not just every like child's DNA, but like it helps to know our colleagues' DNA and our family's DNA, but to know somebody's dreams, needs, and abilities, um, can just like enhance a relationship and more than that, enhance their learning way more than you ever thought possible. So, um, I thought I was doing like fairly good with knowing, you know, mm -hmm. really knowing our kids. And um, then we got into this, this whole concept of DNA. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to do this like tomorrow. So I like sat down with kids and I would just say to them, like, hey, for their dreams, like, I, I don't like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or like, I, I just wanted mm -hmm. to like, know, like, what do you dream about? And um, what do you want to learn about? What are, what are some things like that you hope happen in kindergarten? So they would give, we'd get into these beautiful conversations. And, and I mean, like, they come along, but you can see that light in their eyes when it's like right. their real dream, right? So I, I was marking them all down. Oh, your needs, like what, what do you need from me? What do you need my help with? That kind of thing, which they're great at. And then the best one to ask a kindergartner is like, what are you amazing at? Like mm -hmm. when you look around this room, what do you know that you are like the best at? And you get a lot of like, I'm the fastest runner and I'm like, like just beautiful things right. that they feel about themselves. So I documented it all that first year and I was like, okay, great. I know this. And I was like, that's awesome. And then, so during my teaching, I would bring up like, okay, we're talking about volcanoes. Oh, you know what? We have a volcano expert here and, you know, getting, getting the kids to take the lead, getting our learners to take the lead. And it was really good. It was good. Second year comes along. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this again. I'm like we have so many people working with each of these kids. We have OT, PT, speech. I have, you know, I had three educational assistants that year. Like they all need this information too. So um, yeah, we've kind of, I started sharing it with them and then it's evolved into like posting it so that it's like right there in my, in the forefront of my mind as I do my planning, as I, um, you know, as we have conversations in our classroom, somebody was having a not so great day yesterday and didn't want to come into the room and it's like, okay, wait, okay, hold on. Elsa, Anna, let it go. Like she just like loves all of that. And it's like, blast the let it go turn on the lights like let her come in and she felt like a rock star walking in the room right um and then her mom sends me a message saying like she's having a really rough morning like it's going to be a tough one and like five minutes later i'm sending her a picture of her laughing because i'm like no no we got it like she's good and so i think it's just like knowing them on a different level that really helps me um no year is the same no one child experience is the same in our classroom and that's like what I get right. most excited about when you say like, I could teach, like, 
I think when I'm planning, I think of people like you. I think of like my idols. Would they want their child in my classroom? What, like, how can I make it that personal to them and that experience so wonderful for them? Mm -hmm. I, I, that's where I get the most passion from. Well, the, when you're talking about this too, and I think this is a really um, important facet of it mm -hmm. is I think sometimes you, you see an idea like that. And you're like, Oh, that's a great thing to like learn about kids. And then you do like a little dream needs abilities worksheet yep. and you get that information and it's like something to cover like an hour. Yep. But the way that you're talking about it is like, no, I'm actually getting this information so I yep. can utilize it so I can improve the learning experience throughout the entire year. And yeah. we have to be really intentionally like right. um, when we, when we do things like that, like, is it um, like, and I'm sure you've seen the, like I've, you know, talked about, I don't know if it's similar, but it's kind of in the same vein. Like here's some questions you should ask your kids at the beginning of the year, use sure. these questions, but then how do you utilize these answers uh, to actually improve the learning experience to connect curriculum with what they're passionate about, right? Like and I always get this analogy and obviously you can tell uh, by my, you know, Canadian toque, I wanted to wear like Canadian stuff since we're both in Alberta. Um, I love sports, right? So if you could connect, if, if I could read about sports, I would read all day. But if you may read about stuff I don't care about, um, then that's going to be harder. But if you let me read about sports, I might be actually more interested in reading about stuff I didn't care about later because you honored who I was. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times we try to go the opposite. Like, hey, we're going to get you to read stuff you hate. And then hopefully you'll find we'll your reward you with. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Right. And I think like when you just said it, like that's, that's what I think. Like collecting the information is one thing, but I feel like honored that yeah. they will share that with me. They will share their dreams with me. Like I don't share my dreams with everyone. Like I, I really honor and respect that they share that. And I think it's a privilege to have that information. So I'm going to find a creative way and a mindful way mm -hmm. to use that. Like, I'm not just going to let that sit there. Yeah. It would be a total waste. So, yeah. And I, I pre that really means a lot to me as a parent and an mm -hmm. educator to get you to, to think about that. And like, as I'm listening to you and I was thinking about um, some of the things that you have upcoming, uh, we have a very good mutual friend, uh, Jody Carrington, yeah. who um, you are writing a book with. And when I was like listening to you, I, and maybe, I don't know, you probably made this connection, but I'm going to pretend I just made it. Okay. Sounds good. But you're really the book teachers these days, which will be out soon and then published by impress. And we're really excited about this project. Um, you're kind of like addressing the DNA of teachers, right? And that's the first time you ever thought of that when I said it, right? <laughs> first time ever. No, but I don't like no. that. No. no, maybe that's the kid. Like when I'm listening yeah. to you, I'm like, Oh, that's totally what they're doing. Right. Cause yeah. um, I think, it, it's like like when i hear people like oh i love kids i'm like so when they're 18 you just hate them like you just hate people yeah. after it, right like i think a lot of times we we don't address that those dna uh things that you listed are um you know very good and jody's um you know very thoughtful she does a lot mm -hmm. of work with you know honoring the adults and i think uh it's really excited so uh and I, like, I know, obviously I'm joking. You, you, you made that connection long before I did, <laughs> but I'm a little bit slower to the game here. Right. So I'm like, Oh, that's a good idea. I teach kindergarten. I'll pat you on the back. You're good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, okay. You just make me feel like it was mine. And there you go. But like, Hey, like, tell us, tell us about, tell us about, um, teachers these days. Tell us about like the process, what it's about. Cause I know a lot of people are really excited about it. Yeah. It, I, even hearing you say the words just still is yeah. surreal to me and it's written and I, like I, st it's still surreal. So, um, yeah, the, so the, the, I love that in the introduction, um, both you and Jody kind of tell a story about, um, you guys coming, who knows, maybe you made this up just to make me feel good, but it did. But basically no, you true. say it's to totally her, true. yeah, you say it's to totally her, true. like, I know the teacher you should write this with. Yeah. And she kind of says, well, I do too. And you both kind of say my name yeah. or whatever way it goes. And I'm like, I can't, I will cry. So I will just like yeah. leave it at that. But we said, so, we said do it on three. And she said, no, we went, you didn't. We went, one, two, three. And then I said me. And she said, Lori McIntyre. I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> so close. Dang. I was okay. like, yeah, she, yeah, that's what I meant. I always get me and Lori McIntosh mixed up. Mixed up. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> no, 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 and I no, think like hundred, hundred percent true story. We yeah. both, we both thought of you immediately. Right. Yeah. And I uh, think it's, how, how good. 
it's so crazy, right? Because we're, we're in this process of writing this book. And I think that part of what is um, like, all of our experiences are so different when you and I sit and talk about like what life was for you as a teacher, what life was for me as a teacher and like how that all, like, you know, we're trying to bring that in. So you have this beautiful idea of like bringing in stories from teachers these days. Yeah. And um, we had like, we had hundreds of submissions and I have sat with those stories and I have like cried through them, laughed through them. I know those stories. Like, right. I know those stories. And I, I um, again, have a privilege and an honor that people have written these stories down about grief and trauma and relationship and light up and lid flips and and it's just been so wonderful so um yeah the book kind of goes back and forth with Jody's voice and my voice and Jody has that beautiful way of bringing in you know the psychology behind things right. the theory the science like she just she blows my mind with yep. um yeah and and I just every time I read through it, like we still are doing some editing and things and I read through it and I'm like, I've seen, I've literally seen her 40 plus times and yeah. there's still, I will read it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've never thought about it that way. So she's, she's beautiful. And then we bring along the stories and the strategies um, through my parts of the chapter going like, here's a story that, that, that someone um, gifted us with and here's how it can apply in these situations. So we, write about emotional regulation. We write about um, like things like DNA strategies yep. to, to bring this into the classroom and, and really practical things that we can do. Yeah. yeah and I, like I, and I, I don't know this and I'm, I'm making an assumption here. I think one of the things that is, um, is, is different and unique and I'm really excited about is that um, you've had maybe a teacher write about these things. Mm -hmm. You might've had like a, child psychologists or psychologists write about these things, but not necessarily mesh them together. And like Absolutely. where it's um, not just like referring one to the other, but actually writing this uh, in, in cohort. Yeah. And so I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited about yeah. it. And I know um, you've done a lot to bring in stories from so many different educators to really yeah. empower their voice. And I think, I think that's probably why a lot of people are excited about it because they know that there's that opportunity for people to hear the stories of many, not just you know, oh, and like, yeah. one of the cool things, to be honest with you, is we're all living in Alberta, um, you know, and I know that it's going to have like a huge international impact. And just I'm really proud um, to be able to, to work with you all. And, and actually, like, as I'm thinking about that, I, I think and I, I've had the chance to travel and speak around the world, uh, which, you know, obviously, no, and I'm just saying that because it's just perspective. But I think Alberta is like a really special place for education. I don't know if you 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 see that maybe have that same experience, but like just the stuff that I don't know like sometimes feels like very commonplace is like very different and you know like wow like I, we never thought of that way, which is like I've learned from so many teachers in Alberta and I'm, right. I feel really blessed. And I don't know if you've did you did you grow up here in Alberta? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I grew up in Fort McMurray and yeah. went through the school system there. And I went off to school and I went back to Fort McMurray and I was an educational assistant for five years. It's one of like the most precious time of my life and I, watching teachers and, and seeing what they do. And, and like I say, taking the best of what you see and being able to put that into your own practice is amazing. So yeah, I, I being having this honor now of, of teaching in this province and, and yeah. I'm very grateful. The district we work in is um, so good, amazing for learning through play and really developmentally appropriate um, activities in kindergarten. What's, what's the district? What's the district? Uh, Holy Spirit Catholic Schools. Holy, okay. Yeah. Cause I actually, I think it was, is that where Chris Meaton used to be? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he is. Well. Yeah. He yeah. just retired to Red Deer and he's, yeah. he's one of like, when you talk a cheerleader, like that's he's how awesome. he makes me feel like I, he, he welcomed me here and, and, and continues to just kind of push me and support me. And I love it. Yeah. He was, uh, Chris, Chris actually was like a huge advocate and really helped me at the start of my you know career when I was starting to speak and things like that. And he brought me in. I remember talking to the, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure everyone still talks about it. <laughs> When I was, like, I'm just kidding. They probably don't remember me at all. But yeah, I remember being there years ago and just, it was like a very warm and, and uh, welcoming group and it was really nice. And I know Chris is a, is a really uh, supportive, supportive leader. Hey, so when, so when you grow up or when you, when you grow up, when you grew up, yeah. so what was your, are you, uh, 
Are you into hockey at all? Um, well, we were a hockey family, but yes. Okay, but like, so where are you, Flames or Oilers? No, my dad was a Habs fan. Oh, and, and you yeah. grew up in Alberta? He did not grow up in Alberta. He's okay. from Newfoundland, so it all makes sense then. Okay, that's, that's fair. Yeah, right, that, yeah, that yeah. yeah. Makes, that, that's fair. I actually, so I grew up, I hated the Oilers so much. And uh, I actually liked the Flames because I hated the Oilers so much. <laughs> yeah. And I remember as a kid watching, uh, I think it was Steve Smith score an own goal on, uh, for the Oilers and they lost game seven. And that was the year they, like, the Flames won the cup in between the four years, two and two for the Oilers. So I remember this because right. I actually, like, I, I'm not like a huge hockey fan now, mm -hmm. but I like watch because I hated the Oilers so much. And then like when I grew older, I was like, eh, that's actually Wayne Gretzky. That Wayne Gretzky guy was actually pretty good. He was all right. He was okay. Right. See, my good. dad hated the Oilers so much that he would get Oilers gear all the time. And right. so like specifically, he took like an Oilers license plate and drilled it into our basement wall and told my brothers to just go shoot pucks at it. <laughs> so like, it was bad, bad. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Into hockey podcast. So yeah, like, you know. American like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that it, it's um, yeah, like that. That was a that that was like a a big thing for me when I was a kid. And like actually, it was like we, you know, were my my parents were immigrants, and um, they were really into hockey. Like my mom was like a really big Wayne Gretzky fan. I just did not like him for whatever um, for whatever reason. So um, one of the things that you talk about, since we're like making fun of sports teams, I want to <laughs> just a little shift bit. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you talk about, you know, like kindness is a, is a big thing for you. And I almost like, like sometimes I, I wrote a post, not about kindness uh, per se, but really thinking of like, not people, there's a difference between like being overly positive and finding solutions. Right. For sure. Yeah. And so it's like, we acknowledge Great this, post. right? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for reading my blog, by the way. I think you're welcome. You're the, you're the, oh, you're the one person. So love that, and share, love and share. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Kate, so it's like when you when you think of this, when you talk about kindness, like, mm -hmm. like what, like how how do you see what that is? Like, what what do you talk about this? Because I think it's just kind of like an assumption. But like, what what do you see is is what when you're talking about what does that actually mean? Well, I think kindness to me, like, there's it means a lot of things, but I think what I try and live and we kind of talked about this quote before is that promote what you love instead of bashing what you hate mm -hmm. and that is not my quote and I wish I know who said it yeah um, because I use it all the time but not only do I use the quote like that's how I live my life that mm -hmm. is when you say like oh yeah Lori lots of people feel like Lori's a cheerleader that's yeah. because that's what I live by yeah. right that's why people know what restaurants I like and what bands I listen to and who my idols are because that's what I do I, I choose that and I think so that's, that's to me what it's about. It's about cheering people on and it's about mm -hmm. um, stepping out of my world to um, show gratitude and to show love to people that, that make it better. And I, I hope to do that for them too. So yeah, I think um, you're right. Like kindness is, um, it can be a really simple definition. It can be a really complex definition but for me it's just more of a way of living and and that's what it boils down to I, I i feel and i don't know i don't know maybe this i don't know if this is the topic to get into but i feel sometimes like i i, I try to be that right mm -hmm. and then sometimes i get frustrated if i don't feel that reciprocated do you know what i mean like Absolutely. sometimes like it's like you're like a lot of times you don't you don't hear positives or you don't maybe get um, some of the recognition. And like we were, I was talking recently uh, with Dean Cheresky and we talked about like, when was the last time you felt valued? Do you yeah. ever, do you ever find um, that you are, you are that person mm -hmm. and sometimes you feel you're not getting it. And then you're like, you know what? I'm not going to be that person anymore. Like, just like, cause I, I know yeah. I, I, I feel guilty where I can just kind of shut in and say, you know what I've supported and I don't feel I'm getting this back in return. And I, that's not why you do it, yeah. but you know, no. you, it's like, it's like energy expended in and out. Right. Like For sure. And I think right? like we were just talking about at the beginning of the podcast about expectations, right? Like I learned yep. a long time ago from a therapist I had that like the root of all conflict is unmet expectation. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the book, we tell a story about me going to a staff member for eight months, eight months. I go right. in and I say, good morning, good morning, right. good morning. 
how you doing? Good morning. And some days I got to like, huh? And some days I got to like, Hey, and some days I got to like, oh, I'm okay. You know, like, but not a lot of eye contact, not a lot of, you know, and eight months later, I come in late, frazzled, flat, tired, like kids, whatever, come into my classroom frazzled. And there's a knock at the door saying like, are you okay? You didn't come by to say good morning. I just needed to check on you. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay. Like it did like, and, and sometimes right. like some, I could hear somebody right now saying like eight months, that's ridiculous. I would not put that time and effort in or whatever. Um, it's a way I live. It's a way I, I it's a choice I made. And I, I think that that just, there are so many examples in my own personal life mm -hmm. that I am so grateful that people gave me second chances for times that I was not kind, right. um, that I like to live that way. Um, and, but I mean, there's boundaries too, right? I mean, we're talking about with, especially with COVID, like I have limited energy right now. I don't have the same amount of expendable energy I had to put into things before. Yeah. So if my tank is empty, it's going to be harder for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm putting that into what I can. And my mom always taught me that if you can't, you are polite and you are present. And that's all you really have to be, to be kind is right. polite. That's like the minimum bottom level of kindness is I will be polite. I will be present. I will make sure that I am um, acknowledging you. And then we just go up from there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of course I have people that I just, you know, like, of course. And there's, of course, that it still hurts. Like, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt me right. when somebody doesn't give the energy and the effort back to me. Um, but I just always try and be mindful of the fact that, like, sometimes I, 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 that whole everybody has a story thing. Like, you and I have had conversations where I'm like, if people only knew, right? Like, we all have that. And, um, I just, I've learned through this one guy, I don't know. I saw him at a conference once that you should try and like assume the positive when people, <laughs> um, and that's how I live. I just that assume must like, Tom. that must've been Tom here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, you're right. The guy no, you learned yeah. two things from. No, no. You said it, I learned one thing and then I got a totally second was, thing and I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. I can leave good. the conference for the day. I am good. <laughs> no. And I, you have to do that, right? You got to. Well, it's, it's funny, like when you're, when you're telling us, I, like I, I've spoke at um, some events and like, I'm, I, I try to be very aware of the room and I'm looking at people yeah. making eye contact and things like this. And more times than not, I see the, like the, the grumpy folded arm teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And just like, just making faces, right? And I will tell you the amount of times that person has come up and go, that was like the best key to whatever. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they just, they just don't like, yeah. you know, I'm like, really? Cause it seemed like you hate, like, I'm just thinking you seem like you hate it. And like, I like, I'll start like saying stuff like, cause I'm like a little bit mad. I'm like, why is this person like, and I think a lot of times we make that assumption because mm -hmm. the way that I, the way that I might interact or right react to something would look different, but it doesn't mean they're actually, you know, less appreciative. Whereas some people will act like, oh, this is the best thing ever, but they actually hate it. Right. But they, right. they can put on that face too. So yeah. I think I, I've learned to not, um, judge by that. Right. And yeah. it's like, I, I do my best to try to like judge by the, you know, interactions I have with people. And, you know, and like you said, I think it's really important, um, like who we choose to interact with and, I only have so much time and energy in the day. And one of the things I'm very cognizant of, if I deal, if I'm like spending my day fighting on the internet or arguing with people and stuff like this, mm -hmm. it's going to make me a crappy dad. Yeah. And, and that's not fair to yeah. my kid. And so I like, I'm very thought or to, I actually have two to my kids. The one doesn't know what's going on. She's six months old. Right. So <laughs> she, I could be grumpy. She just loves me and farts yeah. and whatever. Right. <laughs> but the other one is a little bit more aware now. And yeah. so I just like, I, I, I started, you know, really thinking about that as a dad, like, I don't want to bring this home. I don't, I don't, I don't need to bring this into um, this. And I, I just, you know, I, I think that that to me is, um, is really important. And so thinking about um, like your experience, and this is the last question I'm going to ask you, cause I could go on forever. You, you've been teaching and, you know, for a while, you and you've written this book what was that like for anyone who's maybe interested in writing a book and i know we haven't published it yet but obviously that's going to happen soon like what was that experience like for you and like you know what would like to what would you give um as advice to someone who you know wants to try that wants to um write a book and a lot of people are like oh you know how come 
these people like anybody can write a book like mm -hmm. you have to do it though too right and i think there's a lot of people that want to share their voice but you actually uh it's amazing your work ethic on this like how quickly you all got it done brought it together and it's i know it's a, it's can be hard to work with another uh person on this too because okay. you're dependent on someone other schedule and things like that yeah and we're sitting like you know like okay so i had like visions when jody called and then i hear the story like oh and then and we meet with you and we're like oh, yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna collect the stories we're gonna do this and i'm like okay i'm gonna like go to starbucks and like sit with my laptop and music's yeah, yeah. gonna play i was like oh my gosh i spent most of the time at this kitchen table with like three kids around me you know my husband works away and like it was not the experience i thought it would be mm -hmm. um the process i thought i would be but the biggest thing that matters is surrounding yourself with the right people. Right. Like I knew I could call you at any point. And there were times that we had chats where I was like, I don't think I can do this. Like right. I, I literally don't think I'm your, not, I don't think I'm your person. I know I'm not the right person. Like, thanks. But I don't think I am who you think I am. Right. Um, so that was, of course, that like imposter syndrome that gets really hard, especially like when we talk about, we all have such varying experiences as teachers. Like there is not one way that I can speak for all. Um, so that can really, really getting in your head. So I think surrounding myself with the people I knew I could trust. Um, I also want people who are honest with me. I don't yeah. want to be putting something out there that I'm not proud of and that doesn't make, you know, the people that I care about proud. So um, that was, has been the biggest, the biggest part. And yeah. I think like working collaboratively with Jody on this has been a, like a dream. Like it's, right. it's amazing. I mean, I don't think I could have written a book alone. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> so to do this with someone and again, to gather stories from like bus drivers and guest teachers and, like secretaries, we just have so many. You, I just felt that community. I felt like I was part of something and that I was like so grateful to be a teacher, so grateful to be surrounded by people that are doing amazing things for children and that are willing to share. Mm -hmm. So and I think one of the things that I think I appreciate about the way you write, uh, and I'll be honest with you, it's it's because I – try to be this myself and mm -hmm. I, I think that's why I like it is um you don't you don't say like you need to teach this way here is the fix I don't know your kids you know and I think it's always with a like I try to write with a dose of humility hey here's just some ideas that I have but you ultimately okay. I believe that you you are the the answer to whatever problem you have right like you're that solution I think sometimes, uh, you know, people can judge a book without even, which I think is terribly wrong for an educator to do is judge a book without even reading it. Uh, I remember I actually got Innovator's Mindset destroyed on a website and I asked the person, um, did you even read the book? And they're like, no, you can send me a copy. And they just like, you know, and, the, and I was like, really, is that, is that like legit that you actually did that? Um, and it was just like, it was interesting, but like, I'm not, I don't ever want to come off as like, I have the fix for you because like, right. if you really believe relationships are important, if you really believe that, then you understand that every classroom has a bunch of kids with a bunch of different needs, you know, d you know, dreams, needs, and abilities, you know, to steal from, yeah. from you, from steal from Tom Herrick. Right. And so I, yeah. I, I appreciate, I appreciate the, um, the humility um, that you write with and I'm going to say this last thing to you. When you're writing this, uh, I learned this from uh, Kelly Wilkins. She was my leader. Um, best. She's my deputy superintendent, my principal. She was best leader I've ever had. Love her to pieces. And she believed in me, and I learned to believe in myself through her. And I think we all need people like that. And so I think – you I'm, I'm glad that i could you know be that voice for you and i know jody is that voice for you but you have been that for way more people than you'll give yourself credit for and i, I would include myself in that list because i know i've had some uh dark times doing that stop crying you big baby <laughs> i think i made you cry on a plane one so i guess we're even we're even <laughs> right no and that i think i think that's no I think and that, I, you know that's that goes back yeah. to 
um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it can be tough. Like education's exhausting, right? Like, like yeah. the physical stuff. And I is just, hard, I, right? I just, do. yeah, I'm doing yeah. my best. Right. Like you just yeah. know, but I did not get into this just to be mediocre and just like not yeah. do great things. Yeah. I, I want to be really good at what I do. And I want to be able to offer the families I serve and the kids I serve. I want to be my best for them yeah. and for myself. So yeah, surrounding yourself with those believers. Yeah. And so Lori, um, like I said, I could talk to you all day and we already talked for almost two hours <laughs> as it is, but only some of it was recorded. Oh, I didn't record it. No, I was just kidding. So the, so, um, Oops. Lori, uh, before, before, thank you for being on here. Thanks for all that you do for education. I, I, I cannot wait. Um, when the book comes out, I'd love to have you and Jody together. Right. I don't know if I could handle it, but I'll see if I can do my best, but it'll be wonderful uh, to, I don't know if you could handle it either, but <laughs> Let's give it a try. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyone, anyone who's listened to this, I think, you know, hopefully um, this is something I really believe. Give credit, give compliments, give praise to people too early as opposed to too late. That's all I'm going to say because you will regret it if it's too late because it's too late. It means you can't do it anymore. So uh, Lori, thank you again. Thanks for all you do. Um, thank you for being such a uh, great representative, not only of an educator, but you know, uh, one from Alberta. And uh, anytime you want to move to Edmonton into my neighborhood and want to teach at the school, let me know because I got kids about to go to school. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll just, remember just that. So you know. Anyways, <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for um, thanks everyone for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day, Lori. Thanks again. Take care. Bye bye.